my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Each year I take a trip down to Mexico, and we call it a Project Safari, where we actually get to meet and greet a lot of our um, brothers that actually are Rotarians down in that area. Part of the project uh, fair is to make sure that we have good cooperation, good friendships, and everything established so we understand and know the needs of each of these people in these communities. Uh, I have the opportunity of bringing two of uh, those people with me today. I have Karen Glancy and Rob Klug. So welcome, you two. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Glad Wade. to be here. Karen, I'm going to start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born in North Dakota, a small farming community, and um, got here through marriage and worked with side by side with my husband in the dental field for 37 years. Uh, when he passed, then I started looking for a small community to live close to my grandchildren, which I uh, ended up in Carpinteria. Uh, my husband had been involved in Rotary for 37 years, and once I settled into my home, I felt the need for uh, community involvement. And because of your television show, inviting people to Carpinteria Morning Rotary, I, uh, I went. And here I am. <laughs> wow, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yes. Quite fascinating. Uh, Rob, how about you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and uh, moved shortly thereafter to the uh, coast and lived up and down the central coast of California most of my life. I've uh, settled in Lompoc, California, and um, owner and operator of uh, Master Repair Service, a general contracting business in Lompoc. Okay. And uh, I got involved in Rotary to well, getting more, more involved in my community and do good things in our community. And, well, the community has kind of grown from that. And now I'm trying to be more involved in not only our community, but um, around the world. Great. Great. Sounds good. Now, um, what got you into the international service part? For example, this trip was something fairly unique. Well, I got kind of hooked when I went to the first in, uh, international conference in... Uh, um, <laughs> Trip blank, damn it. Um, international conference uh, overseas, and then uh, from there I've gone to other on other uh, excursions uh, along with it, and this is another one along those same directions. You got it. Was that Bangkok you went to? It was Bangkok, yeah. It was Bangkok. Thailand. Because I remember seeing you. Thailand, that yes. <laughs> yes. Very good. Thank you. And how about you? Um, what brought you into international service? You did. <laughs> you did. Um, I'm just very impressed with with the outreach and the stories that you presented at our Rotary Club of the need for Rotary internationally. Very true. Now, I um, don't know if you both realize this, but less than 10% of all Rotarians actually get to experience an international project or see what it's like. So I'm glad you two had the opportunity to go with me on this one. The trip was uh, fairly short. We went to five different states, the state of Sinaloa, Queretaro, Guanajuato, Jalisco, and Michoacan. And this was in six days, so we were everywhere. Um, how did you find the trip? Was it fairly grueling? It, it was nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most fun trip I've ever had where I didn't really get to see anything <laughs> except the people. And the people are just so wonderful. It was so, such a lovely experience. It moves your soul. Very true. How about you, Rob? Um, it was an extremely fast-paced trip. Uh, we were on the go. You know, it uh, seemed like we were transferring to another vehicle or, or uh, meeting a new group of people every few hours. But uh, the people are extremely uh, hospitable and friendly and, and just wanted to expose you to their, what's going on in their community, their lifestyle, and uh, um, you know their their local environments and so forth, and I I found the the people to be phenomenal. That's very true. Um, and it took us about a year actually to organize this trip, believe it or not. And we started with eight clubs, and I told them if any other clubs were interested, and we could squeeze them in, we would. Um, and we ended up with actually visiting and seeing eighteen different clubs. So um, that's why it was kind of a whirlwind pace, to say the least. Let's start with the first picture because uh, we have a few pictures here. The first picture shows us, and actually as the welcoming um, group that came in from Mexico, this is a team that came in from Lagos de Moreno. And uh, your experience, what did you think about that one, Rob? 
Well, I didn't. Ex I, I expected to find a small sign when we showed up, you know, the rotary or something in that version. To find a full-size banner with a bunch of people standing there was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Felt like a movie star, didn't you? Oh, yes, we're <laughs> moving up in the world here. <laughs> How about you, Karen? Same thing? Yes, yes, it was quite a surprise. Um, and all the people behind them that were just cheering us on. It, it really was a very warm, wonderful feeling. It, it really was. I agree with you on that one. Uh, the next picture we have is a picture of one of the club meetings. I believe that was the first club we went to. Karen, let's start with you on this one. What, what did you think about the way that they uh, operate? Is differences and There are unique? differences. Um, one of the things that surprised me in Mexico is the number of women that are in Rotary there. I kind of didn't expect to see that, but there are as many women and, and some as presidents running things. It, it was very wonderful to see. <laughs> True. How about you, Rob? Um, one thing I found quite different th from the United States is uh, they're very formal in their meetings and their attire in most clubs. Uh, most of our clubs here that I visited here in the States are pretty casual and um, uh, more uh, relaxed attire. True. Um, generally speaking, I hate to say, but that is usually the norm over there. Uh, I, I think they dress up and we're a little bit more formal because we are treated more as guests than we were as um, Rotarians, I would say. Mm -hmm. So that was mm -hmm. the uniqueness of that. The next picture we have is a picture um, with uh, myself and the mayor, and that was also in Lagos de Moreno. And you uh, both had an opportunity to, to sit in with us on that one and were presented with the mayor's uh, gifts items. What did you think about that experience? I just really enjoyed the book he gave us. It uh, covered all the um, churches of uh, Lagos. Um, they're very ornate, very beautiful. Um, they were all very warm and welcoming. Uh, it was it was quite a haul. <laughs> <laughs> true, very true. How about you, Rob? Um, the, the book was great because we didn't have the opportunity to go out and see all these churches and the beautiful surroundings of the area, so it gave us a little bit more exposure to their community, So, which was that was nice. Very nice. nice thing. And I don't know if both of you uh, heard of that, but actually the uh, chambers that we actually had the meeting in, 100 years ago, that was a women's prison cell. So. And they oh, had converted it? that into the uh, chamber council. It was beautiful, though. I don't know how they did it, but it came out quite nice. The next picture we have is uh, one of the other clubs we met. Rob, you want to tell us a little bit about this one? Do you remember? Uh, this is, uh, um, in, was in Lyon again, and it was uh, uh, their club meeting. Um, it, again, the people are just, every, to everywhere we went, the people are so friendly. Just uh, welcoming and uh, just open arms. Very true. How about you, Karen? Oh, it, the same experience. Um, it was interesting. At, we would start at 7 in the morning. Every club that we saw would feed us. Um, then we would hear their presentation of a project. And I remember one night we finished eating the last meal at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and we were off and running at 7 in the morning, if yes. I recall. Yeah. Or earlier. <laughs> or earlier. <laughs> Uh, this picture also has a gentleman um, to the left. Uh, he's a doctor, and his wife is the second one from the left seated. They were the ones that actually took care of Roxanne. Uh, when Roxanne was sick, oh. uh, she had food poisoning, was actually in a, the hotel for five days straight. They weren't going to put her in the hospital, so they gave her 24-hour care at the hotel while we were oh, that's staying there. Nice. This is about two that. years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was nice. The next picture uh, is another formal meeting, and this is the one with the, uh, the mayor. Um, mm -hmm. Rob, tell us a little bit if you recall I, that I, one. I think that was in Cortazar. Correct. And uh, it was in their cultural center, uh, which was a beautiful uh, facility. Uh, showed much of the, the local culture and the, the um, uh, pyramids and so forth of their area, and they had dancers there. And uh, again, uh, wonderful little gifts that they've given us of these... Uh, animals made of frosting, I guess you want to call it, um, which were very ornate. <laughs> oh, the sugar sculptures. The sugar yes. sculptures. <laughs> That's correct. The next one, um, Karen, we'll have you take a talk about this one here. This was in front of, I believe it was a library? Um, it was a little grade school and a storage room that they were hoping to make into a library. It was quite small, but 
once they get uh, enough money to, to refurbish it, it looks like it will be just perfect for those kids. Yeah. Uh, it looked like it would make a very lovely little library. Good. Good. Then the next picture um, actually was um, where we stayed at in Lagos, and you can see it was raining that evening, but the evening light was quite nice. It was a beautiful hotel. One of the advantages we have visiting with them is how nice it actually is. Am I out of sequence here? Yes, that's okay. Okay. The next picture we have is, I did miss one, okay. Rock Sands. Yep, okay, uh, we'll, we'll jump back to that one then. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the salon in Pazcuaro. Karen, you want to go on that one? Oh, the salon in Pazcuaro. Um, I had not known this, but Wade and his, and his wife had gone there many times and had really become family to this Rotary Club. And so they honored Wade's wife with a plaque and a salon for having community functions so that um, the love of her would always be remembered. And it was uh, very touching, very, very lovely. Um, they spent all day cooking for us. Uh, it was just an incredible meal. And we all had just such a wonderful time. Thank you. Rob, any comments on that one? Uh, it was extremely touching, the uh, connection between Wade and Roxanne and the club and how much they, they truly loved you both. So. It was, uh, again, quite, quite touching. Uh, had a rough time getting, getting by that one, but we, <laughs> we did quite well. And it was, uh, well, that club I've worked with for probably 15 years, close to 15 mm -hmm. years now. So it's, it's quite a partnership. And again, one of the reasons I do these international trips is to see old friends. It's a reunion, actually. And so when we go to help them out, it's family helping family. Next picture. Rob, you want to cover that one? Um, that was in... Uh we were with the uh, Puerto Rendio. Yes. And uh, they were uh, showing us their project that they were working on, trying to uh, work on there and eating a meal. As uh, it was a uh, drug rehabilitation uh, clinic they were trying to Correct. bring forth. And uh, that was with the mayor and also uh, the gentleman in the middle there with me is uh, the governor, current governor, Uvaldo. What did you think about the food? Oh, the food was wonderful. <laughs> we ate a lot of food, I know that. We, yes. <laughs> yeah, we were always eating. It <laughs> always seems the next thing we're doing is eating again. <laughs> That's right. And then the bottom picture, uh, the next picture we have is a picture actually with myself and the mayor of um, Tototlan, Jalisco. So we will be doing a, an initiating a project with them. So now we're back on track here. The picture we have now is uh, the, the rain uh, and where we stayed at in Lagos de Moreno. We have a, the next picture is a picture showing a clinic. Karen, you want to talk about that one? Yes, that was a physical therapy clinic for um, people that had either been injured or had disabilities or born with disabilities. Um, and one of the things that impressed me the most was their sensory room for little children. Uh, it was, there was quite a need uh, it, it helps them move along so much better so that they're not a, a drain on society. Uh, the lady that ran this clinic was special. You just saw the spirit in her the minute you saw her eyes. Uh, it was very moving. Very true. Um, they all seem to have quite a passion for that. Yes. The next picture we have um, is a picture of a new clinic that's actually been opened up. And what's unique about this one, the clinic is beautiful. They did a great job with it, but it didn't have staffing. You had yet to bring in the people to do the uh, different, different departments. You want to talk about that one real quick, Karen? Something that you noticed on that? Or is there anything that jumped well, out at you on that project? Well, yes, they, it was a brand new building. Um, it was well, well appointed. They seemed to have almost everything they needed except patients. <laughs> um, it was for, um, for children. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing that one again later sure. on, um, see how they've, how they've done. What else is unique about that? They had um, everything there but the equipment also. So that's why yeah. the patients weren't available. <laughs> 
Next picture we have is a picture of, um, actually, Rob, why don't you go over this one? You probably remember that one. This is a gentleman in a hospital in Celaya um, who was suffering from uh, wounds because of his diabetes. And they were looking for a uh, special machine to treat the uh, diabetes, diabetic wounds. Uh, he was remarkably calm, in my opinion, for a gentleman who was facing losing his leg the next day. Mm -hmm. True, and I think it was an ultrasound machine, right? Yes, a special yes. type of ultrasound. Okay, okay. And then the next picture, Karen, on this one? Oh, these are the firemen. <laughs> uh, that was so lovely. They're uh, all volunteer. Uh, one of the gentlemen in the picture, uh, and I can't see him right off <laughs> with these okay. glasses. <laughs> but he... Um, he used his own money to build and supply this fire department of volunteers. Um, it was very lovely seeing them, and a few people actually got to slide down the pole. <laughs> <laughs> Including Rob. I did. <laughs> I think that gentleman that you're talking about is actually uh, just to the left of Rob in the picture. Uh, actually, uh, his daughter is a Rotarian. Yes. 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 Yeah, that's nice. And they also gave us patches. We are now honorary members of their fire department. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm putting that one on my back. Now. Right, right. <laughs> and Rob, you, f you actually went down the slide, you and Debbie. Uh, not slide, a pole. A pole. And it you was um, down the pole. It was wonderful. <laughs> we don't have those kind of chances here in the States very often to do this type of thing. So that true. was great. Very true. <laughs> great. Next picture we have is uh, an event uh, with the banner exchange. Rob, why don't you go over that one? Uh, that was in Cortazar. Um, Sasha uh, Salaya clubs, they were uh, um, chartering a new Rotaract club and uh, it was quite moving to see the excitement of the kids and the club and um, the, the excited uh, Rotary parents too because quite a number of the uh, Rotarians, their children were joining the Rotaract club so it was a very exciting time. <laughs> Good. Next picture, uh, Karen, have you go because I believe it's the same event. Yes, that was the same event and here you have all the Rotaract um, new members. They were all so excited and formally dressed and we had um, some um, folkloria dancers, uh, Spanish. Um, it was just beautiful. Uh, um, it was really fun watching you pin the <laughs> rotary pennants. Many of the, even the boys had tears in their eyes. True, very true. It was beautiful. We did 16 of them that day so it was very nice and I was fortunate um, that my uh, Governor Buddy actually invited me up to help out with that, so that was a very nice touch. In the picture also, you should probably point out some of the rest of the members in our club, in our team. Dorley J Jacobson, who is um, the one seated to the left, and also uh, Debbie Murphy, who is dead center. She was with us also uh, with this trip, but we didn't have a lot of room for everybody here, so you guys got selected. Next picture, Karen. Well, this lovely lady uh, is a Rotarian of one of the, of Celaya Club. And all the ladies there um, wore their scarves beautifully tied in even flowers or cascading um, sashes. And so she spent a, a good half hour teaching us how to tie scarves <laughs> at one of the other meals that we had. And, and the <laughs> one scarf, of the many. And, and the scarves came from? The scarves came from... They were in they, Celaya. They they did gift us some scarves. They it to you. It's yes. a good way to learn how to do the knots. Yes, <laughs> that was really nice of them. Very. Next picture we have is uh, one of the project sites. Um, Rob, we'll start with you on this one. Um, it's in Pascuaro, and uh, the local club had uh, heard through a news article, I believe, about a family that was in need, and they uh, had started helping this family out and. Uh, over a period of time and they had uh, a relationship had grown with this family. So they actually um, got a piece of land donated and then built a house in three weeks, a remarkable period of time um, for this family. And this was the day they were gonna present this family their house. They had no clue they were getting a house that day, yeah. which was pretty remarkable. That is. Uh, Karen, we'll go over the next picture with you. Okay, well this is the couple in their house after being presented. And they were, they were sort of in, in a quandary as to what to do with a key because they'd never had a key before. And they actually had never had a door before on their house. Right. 
And so it was, it was very magical to watch the realization of, we have a real house. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, that, and it was nice. It was quite touching, mm -hmm. actually. Um, next picture we have, Rob, I want you to go over this one here. Um, uh, one, of, one of the special cases of this project. This was their uh, youngest daughter. Uh, she was about four years old, and she had Down syndrome. But she also was uh, afflicted with uh, cataracts. So they were trying to raise money to um, get her cataracts taken care of so she could see. Mm -hmm. um, quite a touching story, and this is for the audience, actually. Um, Rob, it was $2,000 for both eyes. Rob here actually contributed for one of those, um, and then again, that was just on the spur, of the, on the moment, because of the benefits that he's done. I've had the opportunity to work with Rob a number of times, and I've seen this passion come out a number of times, and uh, quite the Rotarian. Rob, thank you for that. Thank really you, Wade. appreciated that, as did the family, and it's going to change that girl's life. It will, and the, and the, the future is bright for her. Correct, correct. Next picture we have, uh, Karen. Did you get to see that one? I did. <laughs> I did. It was a, the walls were standing, but the roof had fallen in, <laughs> and people were still living there. Um, it had been raining quite a lot. They had the tail end of that hurricane was coming over. So for most of the week that we were there, we got rain. Um, and people were living under this tar paper covering a bunch of rags that they were using for beds and everything was wet. Uh, it was one of those moments where you realize how, how fortunate we are and how much we really need to help people. True. Next picture we have, um, why don't I have you go with that one there too, Karen? You talk about what that event was. Oh, this was lovely. This was part of the drug rehabilitation at Perundio. And they'd taken us to a glass blowing school that they'd started for um, the addicts to get away from the drugs and learn a little bit of a craft. And then they sell the, they're making these beautiful Christmas bulbs. And we all had a lot of fun making our own tiny little blown glass bulb, which was so much more difficult than I thought it would be. <laughs> Very true. But it was really fun. It was a good one. Next picture we have is just uh, one of the nightscapes in, in Mexico. And um, nights are great over there. I mean, you can always find something to do and have a good time there. The next picture, um, starting with, is a uh, campus. Rob, why don't you go over this uh, series? we got about it, three pictures there. It was a University of Technology in Perundio that the uh, local Rotary Club had helped build. Um, which was an amazing facility. Just a, it was kind of out in the boonies, but it was just an amazing facility popping out of the, the landscape there. And they, uh, they were putting uh, kids through uh, five-year degrees and uh, for a remarkably low cost. I mean, I was just astonished that they were able to put these kids through school for so little money. What was it, like $300 for a five-year degree? It was $300. What they had sold, the conversion, if we did it correctly, uh, was $300 for a five-year degree in chemical engineering. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, what else is unique about that? It was uh, funded almost exclusively by the Rotary Club of Puro Andiro, uh, Puro Pecha, who um, they are 60 members strong, and they had built this whole thing uh, on their own and actually keeping it going. So uh, that was a very uh, interesting project, and I thought quite unique only because a club of 16 could do so much. They're actually funding all these people. 700 graduates, from what I recall. I think that was right. Yeah, yeah. Rob, here's another one for you. Well, um, we were at another sensory school, and I was playing with a, a young man who was um, using uh, uh, Play-Doh to make little balls with his hands so he could get the coordination of, of rolling a, do a ball with his fingers. And... Uh, I got him to play patty cakes a little bit with me. <laughs> that, was good. that was good. He had had surgery on his elbow. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And then um, I put this one picture in here only because <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work. But we had little times and moments where we actually got to cut loose a little bit, and this was one of them. So yes. The clubs put together. Um, always did a really good job of hosting us, I would say. Yeah, the entertainment was, was very lovely. Yeah. Um, we'd had a, a lovely afternoon dinner. 
one of many. <laughs> <laughs> and they brought in this mariachi that everyone convinced should sing to me. <laughs> and so I, I gave him a little kiss. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That was nice. Uh, next picture we have actually shows uh, the rainy seasons, uh, what you went through. Generally speaking, when I go to Mexico, it's pretty arid, but uh, it was so green from this one trip. It was amazing. And everywhere you went had greenery. The last picture we have is with the Rotary Club of Tototlan, Jalisco, and this is where we're going to be doing a water project with uh, Dora Lee's club. Any comments on that? You know, I was so surprised that, I mean, you could really see the water more so than, say, dirty dishwater. And so I was, uh, I was glad to be there and be part of helping them to achieve drinkable water. True. That is true. And that project's going to benefit 12 to 13,000 people. So it's, it's going to be a big project. How about you, Rob? It was nice because we didn't see a lot of projects that were um, getting ready to kick off. We saw projects that they'd like to do. This one was actually getting ready to kick off, off and we're actually uh, getting a, a project on the ground and, and going. So that was a very nice experience. Great, great. So after this trip, you guys ready to go back? Oh, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about uh, the opportunity? Was it life-changing for, for either of you? It was very life-changing for me. Um, realizing how much I have is, is um, it's important. <laughs> it, is, it is. And Rob? These, uh, it is very life-changing. I've had this opportunity to go on these types of trips a couple of times. And um, every time I go, it really makes you very humble and makes you really appreciate what we have here and what, we're, what we've been able to accomplish and what we can help accomplish throughout the world. That's very true. And again, uh, thank you both for joining us. That's one thing that so many Rotarians don't get to see and experience is the friendships, the partnerships, what Rotary's doing around the world. And to actually then be able to bond with them, it's almost like another club within a club. You become yeah. that close, social members. Um, looking forward to having you guys next time on, on the next trip. And with that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, take a look at international service. It's one area where you, it's fascinating. There are so many Rotarians out there waiting to have new friendships and to create new bonds so new, more things get done within the community. And with that, we'll see you next time. <laughs>